God bless you. God bless you again. Listen, I'm so thankful that you decided to join us here on another recording of our Sunday School Lesson Review. You didn't have to do it, but God led you to do it. I appreciate you for joining in. And it is my hope and my prayer that God uses me to say something to not only touch you, but to touch myself because I'm in need of the word just as much as anybody else. Today, we are still in our Sunday school unit entitled Inclusive Love. Now, I didn't explain that on last week, but just briefly, the theme of these lessons that we're dealing with this month is inclusive love, meaning love everybody, regardless of who they are and what your disagreement with them is. Inclusive love. God's love is an inclusive love. Because John 3.16 says, not that for God so loved the church, but that so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever is an all-inclusive term, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everybody will not believe in him. Everybody will not receive him. Everybody will not be saved. But make no mistake about it. God has extended an all-inclusive invitation to everyone to receive him. Amen. And his saving power. Now, our lesson today comes from... Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 6. And our printed text it goes from verses 27 through 36. And the title says, Overcoming Self-Interest. Overcoming Self-Interest. Said it in the sermon today that Bible, uh, the Bible uh, says, I believe it's, it's James, who, who asked the question, Where do these wars and fightings and strifes and divisions come from that is among you? It comes from the lusts that are in your own members. Your own self-interest is what causes you to divide yourself from another group of people. When the Bible clearly, clearly, clearly states that we should seek the reconciliation of everyone, the edification of everyone within the body, and the unity of the brothers and sisters in the, in the bond of peace, in the spirit of Christ. Now, our writer says a couple of things uh, that I enjoyed reading. He, he mentioned in his introduction a story about two senior aged deacons wives that had been in a 40 year feud with one another. And their feud with one another didn't just affect them, but it was affecting the fellowship of the whole church. You see that in your own church family? There are feuds that are senseless that have gone on and on and on and have caused people in the church to choose a side. And when one seems to be standing up for the other, this side is all against the one who's trying to be in the middle and do right for everybody. Feuds all over the church. Guess what the writer says? He says that it sends the wrong message to the world, this type of behavior and weakens the saltiness of the visible body of Christ. The divisions that we have, the strife that we have, the wars that we wage among one another, when we bite and devour one another, it, if it affects our saltiness as a church. It affects the saltiness of the visible body of Christ. The visible body of Christ. He says God's expectation for believers is that we love and forgive each other as well as our enemies. And I know you got a habit of saying I'll forgive, but I won't forget. When you truly forgive, the aim of true forgiveness is to put it behind you. It, it may be in your memory, but you put it past you. You, you don't, you don't. Hold that charge against that individual. Sure, I know naturally it may cause you to try to move a certain way around the person, to not trust that person with your deepest secrets and things like that. 
But when it comes to how you love that person, how you treat that person, to love your neighbor as yourself, true forgiveness seeks that type of reconciliation, to never hold that charge against that person again, that they may be able to enjoy the spirit of Christ within you so that the spirit of Christ may be shared from heart to heart to heart and our fellowship will be rich and we may come to know his grace, his mercy, amen, and the fellowship of his suffering toward us. Because Christ endured more than we endured. Jesus Christ, he endured uh, being lied on, being talked about, being laughed at, being publicly shamed for our own sakes. Okay? He, he, we share in the fellowship of his sufferings when people do the same thing to us. They just don't do it on the level that they did it to Jesus. But if I can overcome my self-interest and respond in a Christ-like manner, I may be used to help win souls over to Christ. He says God's love is totally inclusive and radically different from the world. Now, I say this, and, and it's here in our lesson biblical context. I say this a lot. It says Jesus was emphasizing the need for the application of his teaching. Just said it this morning in the sermon have been saying it during this whole sermon series on church and state that if the church could just apply the writings of the Bible, if we could just live out what the Bible tells us to do, then we can have a great impact on the state of this nation and the state of this world. Jesus was emphasizing that we apply what he is teaching, the word of God, to our lives. He says the love Jesus was speaking of is agape. His definition of agape is loving even the unlovely by the choice of the lover to be a loving person despite the merits of the person to be loved. There's a whole lot of love in that. Let me just break it down and I've said this before. That agape love, that true love, that godly love is you deciding to carry out what God does. What God is calling us to do in our heart it is you deciding to love like Christ in spite of whether or not you feel that person deserves to be loved. Because guess what? When we look in the mirror, God loves us and we don't deserve to be loved. So he is calling for us to be radically different from the world. When, when, when Jesus says they'll know you are my disciples by your love. Jesus is saying you've got to be above the world's way of loving. You've got to be above the status quo. The way that you love your neighbor, it has to stand out. And he goes through such great detail when he tells us about the Good Samaritan who overcame those racial barriers to not only ask a man, is he okay? Offer him some band-aids, but he cleaned and bandaged his wounds, took him to an inn, and paid for his fat to stay at that hotel until he recovered and told the clerk at the hotel at our front desk that if you need more money, if he stays longer than the money that I've given you, put it on my tab and I will pay the rest. He went above and beyond. I don't know anybody in this society today that would do that for a person who is down and out. Have you ever gone to a homeless person? And not took him to a homeless shelter, but said, I'm going to give you the Hilton Garden experience. I'm going to give you the Hampton Hotel experience. I'm going to put you in a place where you can enjoy your stay and you can see, amen, what it's like to not have to sleep in the streets. Not just not sleep in the streets, but sleep on a plush bed. I want you to get a nice shower. I want you to feel the water pressure that, that this particular hotel affords you. I don't want you to have mediocre, but I'm going to give you a good good little slice of life when you get on your feet then we can go from there to love like Jesus love looks nothing like the world that's why this particular lesson so many of us struggle with that's the reason why you see these guys and people are laughing and sharing this viral video now when they say try Jesus don't try me I'm disappointed in that video you know, it, it's funny when you first listen to it, 
Because we say stuff like that in, in, in our culture, in our regular conversation. Try Jesus. Don't try me. I put these hands on you. No. Mm -mm. Let's look at what the word of God says. So you can understand why I said that this word, we, it, it really kicks against us. It, we wrestle with this word. Refuse to retaliate in our first outline. Jesus says, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them or speak well of them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. Bless them doesn't necessarily mean uh, to, to give them money. But to bless, the Greek word is the word where we get eulogy from, eulogia. It means to speak well of someone. Don't speak well of them when they're dead, but to speak well of someone who is speaking against you. How hard is that? I mean, if I know you lied on me and you're talking about me like a dog, I'm going to sit up here and say something good about you. <laughs> it, it, it fights this flesh, I wrestle with it in the flesh because my flesh is incapable of doing this. You'll see the point here at the end. But here's one where we really, 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 really struggle with. And unto him that smited thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. You know, we look at the other scripture that says turn the other cheek as to say turn around and walk away. Jesus says, if you slap me on my left cheek, I'm going to offer you the right cheek and let you slap me. Now, I know you can't do it. I know you're fussing about it right now. But it's what Jesus tells us to do. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. If, 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 you, take my, if you take my sweatshirt, I'm going to give you my outer jacket. If you take my vest, I'm going to give you my suit jacket. Hmm? Sometimes when people take stuff, they take it and they have a bad attitude about it because they want to intimidate you. Could be that the person needs something. It definitely could be that they're jealous or envious of you, but it could be that the person needs something. And the only way they know how to get it is the way that they've been raised or the way that they've seen. They, they are, are the way that they're feeling. They're, they're, they're upset. They're angry at life and they're taking it out on you. They steal something from you. You offer them something else. Don't embarrass them. I know you can't do it. I can't do it. Can't do it in the flesh. With man, that is impossible. With God, all things are possible. You're, again, you'll understand why he says this at the end. Here's a big one. Give to every man that asketh of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods. If he even takes it from you, ask them not again. Hmm? Are you always holding it over their head? Talking about give me my money back? Give me my stuff back? Telling everybody else the person ain't worth nothing because they ain't gave you back what they took from you? Mm, the devil is a lie. You are a hypocrite. Jesus says in his word, if they take it from you, if you give it to them, don't even look for it to come back. He's going to say it again here in just a minute. And as ye would that men should do to you. That's key. As ye would that men should do to you, do also to them likewise. If you find yourself in a bad position, would you want somebody to be hard on you or would you want them to have some grace? Show some mercy toward you. How, how do you want people to respond to you? How do you want them to do you? That's how you should do others. Not seeking to try to teach people lessons, make them feel bad about who they are. You can't bully somebody into changing their heart. I'm going to say that again. You cannot bully someone into changing their heart. And changing their ways. Now, what is he getting to? Verse number 32 through 34. If you love and if you do for people who already love you, what thank do you have? In other words... 
What you got to brag about? Because sinners do it. The stuff that we do that we consider good things, even sinners do it. Guess what? Atheists came out with this little, uh, this, this particular group of atheists who came out with these set of things that they go by. They're basically saying they don't need a church for what they believe. They believe in doing good, as they say it. They say instead of building churches, we should build more hospitals. But they forget that churches build hospitals. But that's what they believe. They believe this is sinners, unbelievers. Don't build a church, build a hospital, help somebody. Don't give money to the church. Give money to the poor. See, they believe in that type of stuff. If you do good for people who love you, for people who you agree with, for people that you like, it makes no difference because sinners are doing the same thing that you're doing. In other words, you are not standing out. You cannot call that being a light to the world because everybody has a sense of common decency. We're all born with a moral compass because God put his DNA in us. That is why we know the difference between right, wrong, good, and evil. And whether you are a believer or an unbeliever, even the, 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 the unbeliever has a sense of common decency. You lend to them whom you hope to receive. What thank do you have? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Sinners lend and they expect to get it back. You ain't no different from them. Banks, lending institutions, predatory lenders, they lend to you and they expect a big interest rate to come back to them. Verse 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. Whatever good you do for somebody. I don't care how much it is, how much you do. Don't look for it to come back. That's what the word of God says. If you're going to be a Christian, you got to apply the word of God to your life. Do good for others. Don't expect for it to come back to you because your reward is not what you get on the earth. Great is your reward in heaven. Now, here it is. This is why Jesus is saying these things. Because earlier we just said that sinners do the same thing that we do. All right, that we call good. But if you go above and beyond and you love like God loves. If you love like Christ loved, you're going to be identified as a child of the Most High God. See, what he calls us to do is to go above, again, the status quo. Go above standard. To go above and beyond like Christ went above and beyond at Calvary. The greatest love, Jesus says, no man can have any love greater than this, that he lay down his life, all right, for the brothers. You lay yourself down on the altar. You humble yourself. You seek the good of others. And you do what Christ tells us to do. Then people will have no choice but to identify you as one of them Christians. <laughs> A child of the highest. You can't be compared to sinners because sinners can't do this type of thing. That's, that's the thing about this lesson. Our flesh may wrestle with trying to apply what Jesus tells us to do in the first outline, but it is about tr transcending or ascend is about ascending above your physical nature, your natural nature to act out in a spiritual nature where people can recognize that God is in you. The flesh cannot offer the other cheek when you slap me, the flesh will not give you my vest and my jacket, my sweatshirt and my coat. The flesh cannot give you money and not expect to receive money back. But only in the spirit can we carry out what God tells us to carry out. The thing is, we must seek to be in the world, not of the world recognized as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. 
We must seek to be, st no, 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 wait. We must seek to not be seen for ourselves, but we must be glory seekers of God. We must seek to give glory, to bring glory to God. We must seek for other people to be able to see the glory of God through our lives. That is the root. That is the key. That is what this lesson is saying. That the believer must have a mindset to bring glory to God through our actions. And if people see you do what the world sees, they don't see the glory of God. They just see what man does. But when you go above and beyond and you do what Christ teaches us to do and fulfill his law by loving your neighbor as thyself and as Jesus says a new commandment I write you that you love your neighbor even as I have loved you Jesus says when we do that people will see the glory of God seek to stand out don't put a bushel over your candle you are a city that sits up on the hill and you cannot be hidden let your light shine before men that they may glorify the Father. Not you, but glorify the Father which is in heaven. Remembering at the end of verse 35, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. That's a shouting point for me because I was unthankful and I was evil. And still can do some unthankful and evil things today. But thanks be to God that his loving kindness still extends to me beyond 70 times 7. God bless you. May God keep you. And may God strengthen you to carry out his word in your life.